Alrighty, 2019 5K iMac. Here it is, let's unbox it pretty quickly and then we'll jump into it. Ooh. Smells new. Okay, so that was the big stuff. Now we're onto the device itself. And this is probably gonna look familiar if you've ever seen an iMac in the last seven years because this design isn't any different. However, it's what's under the hood that matters. So I'd like to give a shout out to the two people on my last video where I talked about the pricing of this new iMac. Two people guessed correctly which configuration I went for. And that is the pretty much maxed out Core i9 plus the Vega 48, eight gigabytes of RAM, we'll upgrade that, don't worry, and a one terabyte solid state drive. Mmm. Oh, that's annoying. It doesn't have the, the 2018 option symbol. They changed that in 2017 and then again in 2018. This has the 2017 kind. Ah. I like that it comes with a pillowcase. This is either gonna be really satisfying or really tedious taking this plastic off. I'm gonna go with tedious. That wasn't very fun. Don't even think about paying Apple to upgrade the RAM. I bought this 32 gigabyte kit of Corsair Vengeance DDR4, so let's go ahead and install this memory now, shall we? As with all the other 27 inch iMacs of this design, you just push a little button inside the power connector, pull out your RAM slot, and by default, keep in mind this is the eight gigabyte model, don't configure it with anything more than that. It only comes with two of the four slots populated, so we just have to slide these in to the two extra slots. And then we'll go ahead and put that back in. And there we go. We're now at 40 gigabytes of RAM instead of eight. Okie dokie, so while this machine sets up, let's talk pricing. Save for a few RAM and storage options, this is the top spec 2019 5K iMac. Now, if you were to spec this out on Apple's website, that would run you a staggering $4,250. No one said these things were cheap, they're not. However, I did not pay that amount because first of all, as you just saw, I upgraded the RAM myself and I'll have that linked down below. The RAM that I used was some Corsair Vengeance that I got off of Amazon. It cost me $230, which saved $380 over what Apple charges. I also purchased this machine with the education discount, which gets an additional 10% off. You can do that if you're a student and actually, I don't think there's any verification process to like make sure that you're actually a student. So you can just buy anything with the education discount. That's a little pro tip. So with the education discount and with the RAM that I added into it, this machine was about $3,500. So I'm gonna take a break right now and I'm gonna set this machine up and install some programs on it. And then we're gonna run some benchmarks to see how it performs. So let's start our benchmark testing in Geekbench 4, which is a pretty well-known benchmark. So right now I'm running the CPU benchmark and I wanna compare it to a couple of things. Number one, obviously I wanna compare it to other Macs to see how this thing stacks up, but I also wanna compare this machine's performance to a standard 9900K, cause you can find those scores on Geekbench's browser and we're gonna see if the iMac is getting the full potential out of this chip. Very interesting. So I actually ran the test twice because I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just a fluke and we scored 33,417. That is pretty noticeably lower than the average score for a Core i9-9900K, which is very interesting and I think is starting to confirm my suspicions. Now, if we put this into a graph with a few more options on it, you'll notice that we're performing pretty much on par with the 8-core iMac Pro, which is very interesting. Obviously, the 10-core gets away a little bit, but the fact that we have similar performance to the iMac Pro 8-core at a much lower price point is very interesting for CPU power users. You'll also notice there's a pretty significant performance gain over the i5-9600K equipped iMac and the i9 MacBook Pro. And the i9 MacBook Pro, of course, let's not forget, is a $3,000 plus machine, so it's not any less expensive than this iMac. That is a lot of threads. You'll love to see it. All right, so now I'm running Cinebench R20. You'll notice that's R20, not 15. This is a new version that was released 
a couple of weeks ago. Now this new version is not comparable with the old version, so these scores are probably not going to make sense with what you think as far as Cinebench scores, but I do have some stuff to compare it, so let's see what it does. 4,069 CB. That's a lot! Alright, so if we pull up the chart, you'll notice that in addition to being quite dank, this is a very high score you can see compared to an i9 MacBook Pro, absolutely blown out of the water. Compared to my 2015 iMac and my 2016 MacBook Pro, it's not even close. This thing is definitely a multi-core beast, even if the i9 doesn't necessarily live up to its full potential. All right, so next up, we're going back to Geekbench 4 to run the GPU compute benchmark, because let's not forget that this is the Radeon Pro Vega 48. This is a new GPU. We don't really know where it's going to fall. Based on the specs of this chip and what I've seen online, my best guess is it's gonna fall somewhere around a GTX 1060 range, which is pretty good in terms of performance, although it's definitely not cost effective because this is a $450 upgrade. So definitely overpriced, but let's see how it performs. Looks like about 136,000. So let's see how that falls into line. So comparing to the average scores for some other graphics cards, at the top you'll see the Radeon M395X in my 2015 iMac. Below that you'll see the Radeon Pro 580X. Benchmarks are starting to come in of that and you can see that the Vega 48 definitely outperforms the 580X. Whether that's $450, that performance gap is up to you, but that's how it falls into line. Obviously the Vega 56 from the iMac Pro is significantly more powerful, but as I predicted, the GTX 1060 looks like a little bit underneath the Vega 48, which is pretty good. Keep in mind, this is only one benchmark, but this is starting to give us an idea of how this chip performs. All right, so next up, we're gonna run Unigen Heaven. You can see it benchmarking behind me, and whenever I run this benchmark, I use the Extreme preset because it standardizes the score. All right, so at the end of the benchmark, you can hear the fans are a little bit louder, I would say, but not very much. All right, so we scored 1,664. Now, if we compare that to some of the other things that I tested, you can see at the top is the Radeon Pro 460. That's from my 2016 MacBook Pro. A Radeon Pro 560X. That's from Noah's 2018 MacBook Pro. And then below that is my old iMac. So you can see in comparison to my old iMac, this thing is uh, very far ahead. However, compared to a GTX 1080, it's not going to do so well. Now, obviously, as with any Apple product, this thing has its fair share of controversies. Number one, the design hasn't changed, so these bezels are still dummy thick. Number two, SSDs are still not standard. They all come with fusion drives or hard drives. I just, I don't get that. Number three, eight gigabytes of RAM is still standard. That's just stupid. And number four, the cooling system hasn't changed on this iMac from the previous one. Or the one before that. Or the one before that. Or the one be since 2012. Now what that means, for those of you following along at home, is that almost certainly there will be throttling with the Core i9. There's no way that a cooling system that was designed in 2012 is going to be able to keep up with a monster of a chip like a Core i9-9900K. So that's just a disaster waiting to happen. However, one thing I will say is this machine has the Radeon Pro Vega 48. It's very expensive at $450, but it is a lot newer architecture, a more powerful chip, and importantly, it runs cooler than the Radeon Pro 580X will. What this means, because of course this is an Apple product, the GPU and the CPU have the same heatsink, so the fact that the Radeon Pro 48 is going to run cooler leaves us more room for the CPU to breathe. This phenomenon was shown on the Vega MacBook Pros when those came out in November as the Radeon Vega 20 equipped MacBook Pros had mysteriously higher CPU scores despite having the same Core i9 with or without the Vega graphics. Okay, so that is a first look at the 2019 top spec iMac with the Core i9 and the Radeon Pro Vega 48. Is this thing the iMac Pro killer? Well, I'm not so sure. There are a couple of advantages the iMac Pro has. Obviously, you're gonna get faster SSDs, more Thunderbolt ports, 
better graphics, and a pretty dope space gray finish, let's not forget about that. But I still think that this is going to be a very compelling and interesting iMac. Although I will withhold judgment on the Core i9 for right now, I personally think that it's definitely going to be an issue as I start to use this machine more and more, but as of right now, I'll withhold judgment. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. As usual, make sure to follow me on Twitter, at LukeMiani. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video.